I think any time that you set up a company and a business and you go out there and you try to you know, create a demand or a market, you're an entrepreneur. But I would consider myself more an ecopreneur um, in the sensibility of I try to run my business in the most green and most conscious you know, sensibility. That's a great question. You know, when people ask me about Blue Water and Blue Water Entertainment and you know, why we decided to do that venture, I was actually in Australia one day hiking in, in Sydney in the Blue Mountains and, and, had an, and had an epiphany and there was this unbelievable rainbow that came out and, and I was about 26 years old and I had this vision of telling stories that were environmentally based that would impact how we think and how we behave and came with, the, with this idea called Blue Water Entertainment and then about two years later I came to Los Angeles and founded the company and it's been around about 10 years now. So what was my biggest obstacle? Anytime you set up a company, you've got to build your brand and you've got to have an identity and you also have to have a track record. So when you're starting out in the film business and you're trying to prove yourself, you know, the first question they ask is, well, what have you done? And so, you know, my, bis my biggest obstacle was, you know, creating a product and, um, and an, with an entertainment value that would be, you know, everlasting. And so we, essentially, our first product was called Hollywood's Magical Island, which was the story of Catalina Island, which is in our backyard in Laguna, Newport Beach. And we went on a venture of creating this historical piece about the Wrigley family and about the first motion picture theater ever built in the world and uh, in terms of unveiling of how Catalina became the, the background and the playground of the stars. And we, got, we were very fortunate, you know, part of the, the overcoming the obstacles was really going into a small town like Avalon and getting buy-in from all the merchants and all, the, um, and all the, the stakeholders and believing in that vision. But I really believe if you have a vision and you're able to articulate that vision and if people can believe in that vision, then that's the possibility. And that's what we really did. And we were very fortunate. We got Peter Coyote to narrate the film and it went, it syndicated nationally on PBS and, and it still is sold today on, on Avalon, on Catalina Island and still makes money. You know, that's another great question, Antoinette. You know, we all, we all face crises and how do we handle them really determines the character and nature of us as you know, as individuals and as, you know, corporate, you know, CEOs. I would say our biggest challenge was going up and making a, a film called Fuel, which won in 2008 at the Sundance Film Festival. We won the Audience Award. And our biggest crisis was um, how to procure money, how to handle, you know, um, an asset and create, you know, a money flow when we had lots of people all freelancing and all working for free. Well, we, we actually we, we actually went the other way. We actually went after the, um, the agriculture business and corporate sponsors to help in the underwriting of that expedition, and we were successful. And part of our, our, our biggest obstacle was how do you not dilute the product, but how do you, you know, create something that's sustainable that also has a commercial aspect to it? How, do you, how did Blue Water Entertainment become what it is today? I think it was really just following through on that original vision and that original intention of telling compelling environmental stories and, you know, and staying with that vision. And it's interesting now, you know, we're at a, an entrepreneur conference, but the world has finally caught up with the green economy and the idea and the concept of sustainable living. But these concepts have been around for hundreds of years. You know, you know, so the vision, we never lost sight of the vision. So we your, that's what your original vision is still the same. It's, it's still my same vision. So I'm really the embodiment now of what I was 10 years ago. The only difference is the stories are more refined and the packaging is more refined. And we've created different um, product sets. For, for example, for our news part of the business, we have a platform called On the Green Carpet. Um, we have a documentary house, which we've done a couple of docs. We have another one that's in post-production called Rooted in Peace. And then, you know, and then we're now venturing into television and feature films. But, but in the messaging and our core value statement, it has to be environmentally. It has to have a message that, you know, that takes you to a higher place. You know, it's really interesting what you say in terms of competition. We've had this week, we've had our trademark attorneys file cease and desist letters to three different companies that have been using our name, um, Blue Water Entertainment. Um, um, and one of them was actually backed by Mark Zuckerberg at, at, at Facebook. So, you know, how you do it, how you handle your, your situation. We've done it with delicacy and, you know, we filed and we've been a federal trademark for 10 years. So, you know, our company's around, it's been branded, but there's a way to engage and let people be informed about the brand. And even, and even this morning I was on the phone with my 
um, intellectual property lawyer um, Polly Gosh and said, you know, we have another platform called On the Green Carpet, On the Green Carpet, which we've trademarked, and all of a sudden on Facebook, someone's coming up with the Green Carpet team, oh, wow. and it's exactly the same business venture. So, how do you know? The reality is, and as my lawyer, entertainment lawyer, said, Greg, you come up with great ideas. You know, you've got to, you know, the idea is you've got to protect yourself, and you've got to trademark, and you've got to protect your property, and we've done that. You know, we've spent the money, the thousands of dollars to do that, and, you know, and, and how you deal with your, your, we try not to be competitive, we try to be cooperative. Mm -hmm. You know, we try not to come out and say, okay, we're, we, like, in sort of the dominating culture, but more of as a partnering type um, company. So in situations where we can partner, we will partner. Because the marketplace is big enough for everyone. So even though I'm an ecopreneur and I'm doing stuff in the environmental space, there's room for everybody. But you know my platforms, you know, need to stand alone as they are, and I and I will hold my integrity to that because that's essentially how I make my money. In faces, you know, one of the things that changed for me when I made my new film called Rooted in Peace, I started to meditate, and I used to get up, and I still do get up every morning, and I meditate for 20 minutes. And what I noticed is that I just became more in touch with that inner voice, and I think that the way that you create change is not by mandating, but by leading by example. And so what I try to do is just, you know, do the things that make a difference. And if people see how that's impacting my life, then I would hope that they would follow. And, and then the other thing we do is we try to incentivize. You know, like we get scholarships or we get discounts and we try to give people an opportunity where they can actually grow. Because part of any, you know, business is you're dealing with employees and personalities and they have issues and those issues are never going to go away. But it's how we deal with them which really defines our character. And so if we can give, you know, tools to help them along the way, I feel like that's really the best way, you know, to grow an organization. And that's what I've done. You know, it's so interesting because we're, we're, we're a production, we're an entertainment company. So you're asking me, like, what are the benefits? You know, it's not like, you know, we're a Fortune 500 company. We're an entertainment company. So, you know, the biggest benefit that people get is when they watch our films. You know, I'll give you an example. When we made the film um, Fields of Fuel and it played at Sundance in 2008, we watched moms within a 48-hour within a 48-hour period selling their SUVs and buying hybrids. That's transformational. That's transformational. We watched this year. We went to Sundance and we did three on the green carpet video specials um, with themes relating to peace, health and sustainability, and freedom. And really, what you get when you watch each of those three videos and on the green carpet is you get moved and inspired to want to create products or innovation in that regard. So I look at Blue Water as our biggest you know, benefit is our innovation, is that inspiration. It's, it's the ability to dream and to know that dreams can come true. And that's kind of what, what's, what's really wonderful about Blue Water Entertainment. It was a dream. It was an idea of creating film and story wrapped around an environment. And I think when people see our, our films and our products, it encapsulates those messages and inspires them. You know, it's interesting, I, I write on my calendar India, Ireland, Israel, Brazil. And I'm working on every day how to create international partnerships and, pro and productions in those countries. Because the reality is, is it's, the world is flat, as Thomas Friedman has said. And we are now moving in an, an ecosystem where it's no longer U.S., Mexico, Canada, it's the world. And we have to look at how do we galvanize um, and use assets that are around the world for different ventures. So. It